This video will quickly cover the recently released GVK trailer footage and answer the following questions. Are Godzilla's arms really stronger than Kong's? Can Kong actually communicate with humans? How is a Titan fight on a carrier even feasible? And finally, what is up with Kong getting his ass kicked this time? We begin this trailer analysis with a scene of Jai, or Gia, approaching Kong during a storm while chained to the transport ship seen in the last trailer. We will later see how Jai's relationship with Kong is more pronounced as we see that she's the only individual he trusts. Jai's origins are still not fully known, but since we know she's an orphan, we can assume her family and the Iwi tribe was wiped out by some of the terrible creatures found in Skull Island. We are told in the graphic novel Skull Island Birth of Kong, a man known as Rikyo was responsible for destroying the Iwi tribe's defenses, bringing a swarm of deadly predators inside their residing territory. We can assume that Jai's family possibly died in a similar fashion, as it was proven that those defenses were no longer that reliable. Moving on to the next part of the trailer, we see Godzilla ramming through battleships while making his way to Kong's transport. In our previous trailer analysis, we mentioned that this impact most likely flipped the ship over. This is confirmed in this trailer, where we see shots of Kong struggling to get back to the surface for air. Unlike Godzilla, Kong relies on breathable oxygen to stay alive, whereas his opponent's hybrid anatomy allows him to breathe in both biomes. We know that Kong either escaped or was released since we see him standing again and soaked in the next sequence. But there was another trailer release that gave us a continuation on this scene. Godzilla literally slaps back with an enormous amount of force, which led many G-fans to think that Godzilla's arm strength is much higher than Kong's. In our Godzilla vs. Kong battle analysis video, we mentioned that Kong held the edge on arm strength, and we still stand by that verdict. It doesn't take an enormous amount of force to knock down a titan whose weight is unevenly dispersed throughout its body. Kong's corporal build suggests that most of his weight is located above the waist, meaning that any impact force located in these areas could cause Kong to lose his balance. Not to mention that he's standing on a highly unstable platform. Godzilla doesn't punch, he slashes at opponents. This maneuver leverages both his upper core and his claws to literally throw an unstable Kong backwards. Note that the fight on the carrier is about stability. While Kong has only two smaller legs to keep him stable, Godzilla has two thick legs and a massive tail to act as a third limb that helps him stay upright regardless of how many punches Kong throws at him. In other words, it is technically impossible for Kong to knock Godzilla down with just punch attacks. Kong seems to have figured out a counter for this though, as we see him lower his center of gravity to knock Godzilla off board to where he fights best. By compiling all the footage we have of this scene, this fight could have looked something like this. We can assume that Godzilla won this battle since Kong has infinitely less surface area to fight on than Godzilla. But what caused Godzilla to withdraw from the battlefield? We'll explore why later. Up next, we see Kong get once again slapped by Godzilla and thrown back to the coast, possibly around here. We know Godzilla has mastered the use of his tail to maximum effect. This weapon was the one responsible for the male Muto's death in 2014 capable of sweeping Ghidorah in 2019, and now we'll see it smack Kong back where he came from in 2021. The fact that Godzilla is throwing Kong all over the place could indicate that he is much heavier than Kong. Heavier objects have a heavier impact and require an immense amount of strength to move around. Add all these elements together and we have a solid combatant. Kong is now seen from inside a building during a well-lit night battle. 
we see him holding a battle axe here, which leads us to believe that this probably took place after this scene, where we see what could be one of the most decisive moments in this film. We see Eileen Andrews, Nathan Lind, and Jai approach Kong after he seems defeated. This is now two instances seen so far in these trailers where Godzilla withdraws after beating Kong. For Godzilla, this is actually considered to be odd behavior, since his fight-to-the-death philosophy seems to be neglected. In the past seven years in the MonsterVerse franchise, we have never seen Godzilla retreat from a fight. But we have seen other Titans retreat from Godzilla after the odds weren't in their favor. This leads us to believe that Godzilla is not initially seeking to kill Kong, but rather focusing his attention to whatever he is really looking for. Possibly this guy. Up next is probably the most interesting part of the trailer, Jai communicating to Kong in sign language. Unlike the popular belief that Jai and Kong develop their own private form of communication, this can actually be picked up by other humans. That's right, this is actual human sign language. There is evidence in the real natural world of apes using their primitive form of sign language to attempt to communicate with humans. Kong seems to be no different, but in this case, could Kong actually answer back to Jai? If so, we are looking at the first Titan ever in the MonsterVerse, and perhaps the only Titan to be capable of having direct communication with humans. We are stepping into the realm of speculation here, but if true, Kong could understand less abstract words like friend, foe, boat, temporary, safe, and maybe Godzilla. But we'll definitely wait for more info to confirm this. This scene shows a reaction to what Jai was communicating. But again, knowing how trailers are put together, this might just be Kong mustering up courage once again as we see a faint blue glow reflecting in his eyes. We see a shot of what we all believe to be Mecha Godzilla, possibly erupting from an apex base found in one of these places, if this location is in fact in Beijing. This trailer ends with even more shots of Kong breaking off his collar, jumping from ship to ship, and finally landing on the carrier. Now many of you may wonder, how is it that a carrier can hold the weight of two titans without sinking? We have a few explanations for this phenomenon. This can be explained by the Archimedes Principle, which simply states that the upward force of water exerted on a floating object is equal to the weight of the fluid this body displaces. Let's start off with the carrier. If the weight of the displaced water below the keel is equal to the vessel's weight, the boat and anything on it will be able to stay afloat. This means that any displaced water underneath the carrier needs to be equal to the weight of the carrier, Godzilla, and Kong. To put this into perspective, imagine a small piece of Tupperware floating with two rocks in it. The individual rocks are heavier than the plastic, but this entire entity stays afloat. This is, however, not taking into account that these two objects are displacing their weight all over the place while fighting, which is not technically possible. So this scene is technically not feasible. Unless, of course, there is some unknown technology that these ships are equipped with that helps them stay afloat regardless of what stress they encounter. If you enjoyed this video and would like to see more, make sure you hit that subscribe button and ring that bell to not miss out on any more kaiju content. Whose side are you on? Let us know in the comments. Thanks so much for watching, and we'll see you next time.